Welcome back to Mac Music Review. Today we're going to be talking about Andrew McMahon's sophomore album. But before I jump into the actual review, just wanted to say that there's going to be some stuff down in the description that you're going to want to read to see, you know, if you want to do an album request, if you want to know how this channel works, where I'm actually getting these reviews from, how just just more a little bit more information about the channel, just read the description down below. Andrew McMahon is a Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness is a uh, alternative slash pop, like pop alternative project by singer songwriter, um, original, I mean, a uh, former band member Andrew McMahon. He was the lead singer for Something Corporate and Jack's Mannequin, in that order. And here, this is his uh, solo work. I think, I'm actually not sure if it's a solo work, but he is front and center stage on this album and on his self titled debut. So, what is this thing? What does this album sound like? Zombies on Broadway is a much more pop-leaning album. His debut, uh, the debut, the self-titled for Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness, was very, um, it was pretty upbeat. It had some things that sort of sound, that sort of could fit into pop music, but this one lyrically and musically feels a lot more mainstream, feels like it's actually trying to fit more comfortably in the pop genre, trying to make a little bit more money. Like uh, the self-titled, this album only has... This album officially has 11 tracks, but the first one is like a 30 second intro. So really it has 10 tracks, just like the self-titled. You know, it doesn't try, it doesn't, you know, it's not a super duper long album. It is a little bit longer than the debut, I'm pretty sure, because this one has one particularly long track. It's called Birthday Song. It's the last track on the album and it's, it's the biggest by far. I think it's the biggest, one of the longest songs that Andrew McMahon has ever made. Just like the self-titled album, Zombies on Broadway, Zombies on Broadway has a tiny little bit of success. It didn't make as much money. It definitely wasn't as commercially successful as the debut. But this album, like the self-titled, had one hit on it. It's called Fire Escape. I heard this song a few times on the alternative radio. Especially, it got pretty decent radio play like when it came out. But after not too much too much time passed, after like maybe just one or two months, it already got off the radio and now I like practically never hear it. While Cecilia and the Satellite, the hit song from the self-titled, I still hear that on the radio sometimes. I still hear it when, you know, walk around the mall or in a pet store. I've heard that a few times, but uh, Fire Escape is definitely a less big hit. Not as successful as Cecilia and the Satellite. As I already stated, this album is much more pop-centered than the self-titled. Lyrics-wise, this album, most of these songs are just love songs. A lot of them, very shallow love songs. I think on the song, Shot Out of a Cannon contains the lyric, um, you're the drug that's keeping me from landing, and stuff like that. You're going to hear some cliches that you hear in pop music, you know, referencing, you know, like... I don't know. Stuff along those lines. If you've heard that line, you've heard a lot of other lines on this album. But it also has some heart, especially on the songs um, Dead Man's Dollar and Birthday Song. Dead Man's Dollar is about Andrew McMahon trying to provide for his family, how he's working to make the dead man's dollar, how he's just, you know, he's working to provide for his family. But in the song, he says he's working super hard, but he also wants to live with his family. He wants to have a connection with them, but at the same time, he's drawn to working and providing for them. It's an interesting contrast, and it really, the song does have a lot of heart, uh, something that a lot of pop music lacks. I'm pretty sure Birthday Song is about Andrew McMahon's daughter. It's kind of a very personal, very slow, it's the only really slow song on the album, the only really, like, try to be kind of more serious. I'm just musically, it's not one you can really dance to, and all the other ones you could dance to, they're very upbeat. This one's just kind of long and slow, and, you know, it's supposed to be heartfelt. There also is some really um, nice poetic stuff on this album. Specifically, what really comes to mind when I think about the poetic side of the lyrics on this album is the song Love and Great Buildings. The chorus says the line, love and great buildings will survive. The chorus says the line, love and great buildings will survive. It's just, it's just a nice line, you know, love and great buildings will survive. I don't know. It's, it's getting cheesier each time I say it, but it's kind of a nice poetic line. It's, it, it's kind of memorable. That, that line really sticks with me. The music on this album is very upbeat and fast. It's very, very positive, and a lot of times it kind of leans into uh, pop territory. Even sometimes there are some like bass drops on this album 
like in the style of modern pop EDM. Like on the song Shot Out of a Cannon, it has a section which is just basically this. It does the chorus, just kind of this generic lyrics on the chorus, and then it does like this EDM style music. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound exactly like other EDM music you'd hear on pop radio, but it definitely is borrowing from that and is kind of mimicking that trend. Now, despite the music on this album being more mainstream, being more commercial than it is on the uh, debut, on the self-titled debut, it is, this album is super duper enjoyable. This thing really does sound great. It is pop music done right, essentially. Nearly every song on this album is a super fun, extremely catchy, just really, really enjoyable, upbeat pop song. Uh, the album kicks off especially strong with the um, opener, Brooklyn, You're Killing Me. This song makes you feel like you're in a car, just like racing. It's just a high speed, high adrenaline song with a huge, just very emotively sung, very energetically sung chorus, and it's just a ton of fun. So Close, another really enjoyable song. Even with its slightly generic, love-centered lyrics, slightly shallow lyrics, this thing, just, the music just sounds really good. It just works really well. Shot Out of a Cannon, despite my critiques of it, it's an enjoyable song. Seriously, almost every song in this album is a hit in terms of music and enjoyability. There are only two songs in this album which I would say really don't sound great. I, the two songs that I really just can't get into that the album would be better without. The album could definitely do without. And those songs are Island Radio and the previously mentioned birthday song. Island Radio is kind of a snooze fest. It's just, it's the, uh, the other songs in this album are so upbeat, are so energetic. They're like, kind of overproduced, they're overstuffed, and they're just emotively sung, and they're just, they just race, and they're just awesome, they just make you feel good, they make you want to dance, they want you, make you want to sing along, but Island Radio just doesn't have that energy, it's kind of, it's slower, but it also feels kind of mainstream, and lyrically, it's really not much, it really doesn't have anything going for it, lyrically, or musically, so, all in all, it's, it's just a mess. I seem to be in the minority of people who, I, I dislike Birthday Song, and I feel like some people like Birthday Song, I don't like it because I feel like it's trying too hard. This thing is by far the longest song in the album, clocking in at over five minutes, it's also the slowest song in the album, it's also the most serious song in the album, and it tries to have heart, in the lyrics, the, the heart is there, and you know, the emotive singing is there, and the slow music is there, but it just feels kind of mawkish. It doesn't feel, it really does, for me, it just doesn't feel sincere. It just feels like Andrew McMahon is trying too hard to have a very serious emotional song. I know he's capable of doing these serious emotional heartfelt songs, as on the self-titled. Songs like See Her on the Weekend and Rainy Girl are beautiful and amazing, but this just, it's overlong, it's kind of boring, and it just, it doesn't, ha I feel like it's lacking that heart that it tries to have. So, honestly, not, just not really, don't really like this song. Not, it's not a great song, in my opinion. As I already stated, lyrically, this album is definitely not as good as the first one. Uh, the lyrics are more mainstream. They all sound more commercial. They're all, they all fit much more comfortably with pop music. A lot of them are kind of shallow. But, in other places, this album, as I already stated, has heart. The lyrics have heart, and a lot of times they are, have a nice amount of poetic to them. I don't know how to say that. The lyrics are kind of nice and poetic on a lot of these songs, and generally just more intelligent than pop music, more original. So, while it's not as good as the debut, lyrically, it's not the It's In terms of pop music, I would say this album uh, definitely has standout lyrics. I would say that Zombies on Broadway is a really, really good pop album. It's not a fantastic album, I wouldn't call it a great album, but when compared to other pop music, I would say this thing is actually pretty good. It is better than most pop albums. It's better than most of the things you'll hear in the pop genre. It doesn't have the heart, and it doesn't have as good music, and it doesn't have as good singing. It just doesn't feel, it's not, it's just a much less enjoyable, much less wholesome album, I should say than the debut, but a very enjoyable album. The music on these songs is just really upbeat, super fun. Most of these songs are crazy enjoyable, easy to really listen, really easy to listen to and enjoy. And 
Um, lyrics are not the worst thing ever. And the singing, of course, is very emotive. And it actually, the singing, the vocals, Andrew McMahon's singing fits very well with these very upbeat, fast-paced tracks. It works actually really well. So, really, Zombies on Broadway, really not a bad album. Very good for a pop album, even though, you know, most pop music really isn't great. I'm going to give this thing a 3.5 out of 5. Do you like this album? Do you dislike this album? Have you heard this album? You might have heard this album. If you have if you have heard this album, do you like it? Do you dislike it? How is this video? How is this, how is this, um, background? I feel like it's not great. Honestly, it's kind of, it feels kind of lopsided. I feel like I've been kind of like facing sideways this whole video. And I feel like I've been kind of awkward in this video. I feel like I'm, I'm not on my A game with music reviewing. Next, we're going to be looking at, uh, three albums by the afters. They are a Christian pop rock band. And you've probably heard their stuff. If you listen to Christian music, you've heard their stuff. Like it or hate it, you, you've heard them. So be looking forward to that. Um, that's it, guys. Um, I'm back. It's been a while, but I'm here. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.